freaking first cut. Golly! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the First Cut Podcast. This is your Farmers Insurance Open. We are Farmers Recap. I'm Patrick <laughs> McDonald. I'm taking the host chair from Rick. He's out having fun in sunny California, but I am joined by the legend himself, Greg Ducharme. Greg, what is going on? How is your Saturday night? The First Cut Pod after dark and there's Ooh, no par- yeah. and there's no parents home. Rick's they out left- playing. This is trouble. That's all I got to say. <laughs> they left us a little pizza money. We got a <laughs> we got a tired Josh, you know, hat tip to Josh early on, traveling all day, made it back in time to produce it is not lost on us and we got a doozy out west. Let's let's just go through the leaderboard, go through the challengers early and it was the defending champion. Max Homa put a charge into this tournament, made you think no way he could do this again, the king of California, but a really nice early start, makes a, a couple early birdies, puts a jolt into his round with an eagle on the par 5-6, and then he kind of fizzles out a little bit, but it, it was another nice quality start, top 15 finish for Max Homa in California. Uh, five of the first six holes, he gave himself really good looks for birdie. Um, only he capitalized at one miss a good look at two and three um, and then made another one at four nice par putt at five and then absolutely stuffs it five feet from 232 at five um, but you know the thing that I look at with Max Holman Patrick that is so impressive to me and gives me some really good hope going forward is this isn't a one trick pony anymore you know, there's every area of his game can bail him out. And you kind of zoom out on the week as a whole. And he could very easily have missed the cut because the first round he was over par early. He was really struggling and he scrapped together a round of 70 that kept him in the mix. Didn't quite take advantage of the North course. If he had taken advantage of the North course, he could have really gotten himself in contention. Um, but what what you see on these difficult golf courses is what, I, is what I'm looking to see from him in majors this upcoming year. Can he scrap it out when it's tough? And maybe one of those weeks he does really find the groove with his golf swing um, and, and kind of can lean on his ball striking a little more until he needs that short game to come through. It seems a little bit right now like he doesn't really he's not swinging that great. His short game's bailing him out. Uh, and he's he's been able to accumulate some really nice finishes on that. Um, but he he's really close to putting it all together. Yeah, I, I would cat- categorize his tournament as professional. It was a very professional top 15 finish. It's what a top 10 player in the world should do when you don't necessarily have your A game. He's still somehow, despite not really hitting the ball too well outside the front nine, uh, this morning, he still carded three rounds of under par golf on the South course, which is yeah. no joke. That That is very difficult to do, um, but it was just not enough. He kind of lost some momentum with the short par miss on number seven. And then we know Torrey Pines can kind of eat you alive on that backside if uh, you're just slightly off. But another quality start. It's a major championship venue. Like you said, Max Homa is a major championship caliber player, despite the lack of results. Maybe this is just a, a step in that direction moving forward but uh we got to talk about a couple other guys as well a couple i guess major championship eh, guys as well and let's start with let's start with xander shoffley wet sock shoffley (laughs) it's the ball great all week he is in the mix as well he's kind of just lurking most of the day they go to him on coverage every so often and he really had uh, a chance there. I believe on 15, he makes that birdie. Colt No says he walks off the green, tells him, don't let me get hot. He does not get hot. Bogey's a couple more coming in. But for Xander, you know what it is? It's another nice payday. It's another top 10. It's another tournament where I think unlike the last two, the American Express in the century, he probably felt some nerves on the back nine. He kind of felt like he was sort of in it, even though he faltered down the stretch a little. Well, you know, a lot of the, he was four back a lot of that back nine. Mm -hmm. So 
it, it just felt like he left it on the table. Like he should have gotten himself in it early and wasn't able to capitalize on some good opportunities at 15. He, that shot was that eight iron <clears throat> was awesome. Stuffed it right next to the hole. And you were kind of hoping to see a little more of that, but ultimately that there's not a lot of that going on on this golf course. So you have to, you have to be able to capitalize on some putts. You got to make, you got to get something to go, especially when you're trailing and Xander lost strokes putting both days over the weekend. I mean, yesterday he had 32 putts, right? He oh. lost <laughs> two shots to the field putting. Today was 29 to so maybe a little better. He lost 1.8 strokes putting. So that's the, that's the disappointment for Xander. Um, that's different than what we saw at the American express. I, I don't think Xander has a putting problem. It just mm-hmm. went, it went cold this week. Yeah. I, I think long-term he's a very good putter. I think yeah. he was inside the top 20 in strokes gained putting last year. Um, but he missed some really crucial opportunities, a short miss on the par five ninth. He yep. had a really nice approach into the par three 11th down the hill. And then you couple those late bogeys and they pan to him on 18. It's like, Oh my gosh, this Andrew Shoffley has five feet for Eagle and the putt doesn't even sniff the hole. No, it, and it was, it wasn't even close to threatening it. And he just looked so dejected. Although um, I, I will say to that, that's not just a Xander thing. There were a lot of guys. There's so many more embarrassing looking putts here. There's mm-hmm. a lot of lip outs from around the hole, but there's some of those like, five to eight footers that you they think should snap and they never break and and they miss by a foot out of five foot putt it happens i mean i saw it probably six times this week where they they cut to it and it's like there was one uh who was this let me look at i'll get this name when tom whitney Okay, okay tom whitney they flashed to him for this like four foot birdie putt and he misses it like two feet left. He's playing great. I mean, he shot 68 today. He played great golf, gets mm-hmm. to the tour from the corn ferry. And it's just, it's, it looks so embarrassing, but it happens to Xander. It happens to Ludwig. It happens to everybody out here. And I think that's a function of just how difficult the greens are. Yeah. Uh, Ludwig has to be kicking himself for, what was that Thursday or Friday? The four put on thirteen. Uh, that was um, that was Thursday. He yes, it was Thursday. He missed a couple. I'm all confused because of you know how the oh Wednesday the oh Wednesday yeah. start yeah yeah throws me way off. <laughs> um, yeah. But so round two was the four putt, and then the three putt on the very next hole. He missed a couple more short ones yesterday, and. Oh, you want to, Patrick, you'll like this. You like the Xander numbers, the number of putts. <laughs> Wait till you hear this. Um, oh, Maybe it wasn't him. Well, he had 32 putts on round two. Okay, Xander. Thursday. No, this is Ludwig. 32 okay. putts round two, 27 yesterday, 30 today. Oh, gosh. Just killer. No, but I have a better putting stat for you. We'll We'll get there. Okay. I know it's coming I, up. I do too. And okay. <laughs> Xander Shoffley in the least surprising news, water is wet. The sky is blue. Xander Shoffley finishes top 10 <laughs> in a PGA tour tournament. We're, we're on to, we're on to Cincinnati for, <laughs> for Xander. Um, but while he might not have had a real claim at this trophy, I think another contender is going to walk away from this tournament thinking he should have won. And that is one Mr. Tony fee. Now <laughs> it was a stripe show out there. We had our Mark Immelman following him. He sent me a, a text from the ground. So it was just a, a wine emoji because he, he beat me in a wine bet. Ludwig Obero over Sung JM. And I'm like, dude, you got to focus my man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was on a string and it felt like, Whatever hole he was on, you turn to Tony on the coverage. It's anywhere from five to 10 feet for birdie. And he just did not get it done remotely close on the greens. 
this was the one I was thinking of. I went to Oberg, and, and Ober was pretty bad too on the greens. But Finau total putts. Now they track this for. They actually have it for all four rounds. So Wednesday, South Course, thirty putts. Actually gained gained half a shot, a little more than that. Round two, twenty nine putts on the North Course. Played really well that day. Round three, Friday, South Course, thirty six. <laughs> <laughs> 36 putts. Oh my he God. lost 2.7 strokes putting yesterday. Today, South Course, 30 putts. So, I mean, his second in strokes gained, uh, T to green, second strokes gain approach. Like you said, it's an absolute stripe show. He finishes at 10 under, and it's it's just... It's hard to imagine having that ma- that many good looks. It's one after the next, and he doesn't capitalize. And so he loses by three. He did finish at 10, lost by three. You telling me you can't have 33 putts and 29 putts? Greg, got to be want, frustrated. You want another good putting stat? Yeah, okay, let's hear it. So Frank Noblio put this out there. In, in the middle of his back nine. And so you have to add two more misses to it. I only know the percentage. I'm assuming the fraction, though. Tony Finau made 12.5% of his putts from four to eight feet this week. 12.5. I, I am assuming at the time it was one for eight, and it worsened to one to 10 over the last uh, few holes. Four to eight. The fifty percent mark on the PG Tour is eight feet. That is staggering. Ten percent of putts from four to eight feet this week. It's uh, appalling. There aren't a- enough adjective adjectives for it. Look, this is the thing with his method. There's um, some very low hands. The toe is notably up in the air. There's a, a lot of hand activity in it, which is intentional. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's an element of Tony Fino that it feels really good when he's putting because he's stuck with this. He's stuck with this method for since at least Mexico last year. I don't remember when exactly he started doing it, but he's not given up on it. So I imagine it feels really good, but the results are not that there. there is not consistency to it. And um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Olin Brown. But he won a senior open in like 2011. And I spent a lot of time with him when I was down at Medalist. And he has this very unique putting method that is where basically his hands don't move position, but the wrists just flick. And he's a great putter. And I tried it and imparted the philosophy. And you can hit some incredibly pure putts and get a great roll on it. But when you get out there on the course, on the grass, as we used to call it. The speed control is just so variable. And and you lose that ability of touch and lose that ability of consistency. It looks to me like that's what happens with Finau. So I'm sure it feels free, but he's got to he's got to look into something else here because this this isn't working. Do we do you think we will ever see Tony Finau with the broomstick? I would love to see that. Why not? Well, I mean, look at every, every look at how much success you can have with it. Did you see any of Will Zalatoris's putting strokes this week? Looked great. It looks so smooth. It's a, like a totally different guy. It's a totally different guy. I'm in on Will, by the way. I'm psyched about the week he had this week. But it it, it could be such a simple remake. And player after player after player have had success with it. And you don't even have to become Bernard Langer with like, you don't have to become a great putter. You just have to be okay. Yeah. I mean, perfectly fine. It Well, it wins Mm because the rest of your game is well above average. Yeah. So the methods a frustrating thing in this day and age with all the other options out there and all of the, you know, testimonials of PGA tour players. So you can see that we can see sitting from here. 
I think it's time to try something new. Yeah. And I think this one is so frustrating for Tony Finau because the front nine for the first time all week, he was actually making putts. He gained like nearly a stroke and a half. He, he holds some really nice putts uh, from outside that four to eight feet range. Uh, he made a couple from roughly 10 feet and it was like, okay, this is the time he gets within two after he birdies uh, number nine. I think he shot four under on the front. And then it's just miss from seven feet on 10, miss from five feet on 11, both really, really good birdie opportunities. Makes a mess on the par five uh, 13th with a really bad layup. Yeah. Uh, misses a 10 footer for par there. And it's just, it, it went from l- looking steady in Tony Finau's uh, relativity to just looking horrible so so quickly right it, it I mean, was, he's at 11 so he, he's the guy mm-hmm. he's the guy at that point before 13 yeah uh, so frustrating yeah but it's a nice finish for tony another quality result at tory pines i think that makes uh like nine top 25 finishes and 10 11 appearances or something like that he loves uh, the place you can see top- why yeah, six top tens. Uh, and it's good for someone like him who's been pretty quiet, honestly, since that win in Mexico to get uh, get some quality going with a, a big run of golf here between Pebble, Phoenix, and Riviera. And he's had success at Phoenix and uh, in the Riviera before. So definitely someone to, to keep an eye on. Um, do you want to talk about Will at all? Uh, at all or do we want to go straight to the final group? Uh, I well, I'm psyched for Will. Shot 71 today, eight under, T13 total. It just felt like on this kind of golf course, this was the Will Zalatoris of old. Mm-hmm. And it makes me wonder, or we're shaking off a little bit of rust in the first couple events. But even if we went back to the original Will Zalatoris before the surgery, a lot of those events wouldn't have been great spots for him anyway. Right, he's a guy that plays hard golf course as well. We look to him in majors, um, but not necessarily at the American Express. Um, and so to see him perform this way, tee to green, to see the putting stroke look the way it did, uh, to see the strategy kind of, he was able to get the scores out of his strategy, which is something Rick and I talked about last night. I'm just, I'm psyched for him. And I think he's, a fact i think i i'm kind of i was very unsure of what it was going to look like and now i believe that will will be right back where he was yeah i was honestly in the same boat i was a little more pessimistic just because back injuries you don't really know and then you couple in you know slight swing changes too and it felt like it could have been a potential recipe for uh you know some really bad play but like you said it, it's uh really good to see him back and he, he holds some really clutch putts. He made the cut right on the number on Thursday and then had that great round of the day on Friday on moving day, four under 68, and played some nice golf uh, today as well. I believe we might have one other person joining us. We'll get him in the loop when we talk about that final threesome. The United Nations of sorts, a German, a Dane, and a Frenchman walk into a bar in California. We'll tell you what happened after a quick word from our sponsors. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. We are back and... We have a third. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kyle Porter. Porter, Porter, Porter. The three, <laughs> three man weave is alive and well. Oh, no we. Greg, what a week. Say, come on. <laughs> I love the After Dark uh, logo, by the way, producer Josh. That's slick. Sweet. Yeah. It's been working overtime. All right, KP, you come at a time where we talk about the final three, and we'll kick it off with. Steven Yeager himself, 36-hole leader, 54-hole leader, 
gets off to a really nice start with a couple tap-in birdies on number two and three, kind of cruising there, it seems like, some missteps on the greens, and then falters towards the end. What do you think of Jaeger's week as a whole and then his performance in particular in crunch time? Well, I, you know, he's interesting because he's obviously, Joseph Lamagna pointed this out uh, very astutely, but he's he's gained a lot of speed off the tee. And I think we saw, um, you know, that really helps you at a place like Tory, right? Where if you're not hitting fairways, you have to be out there because if not, you're just going to be playing from behind the eight ball all week. And so I, I think we saw a little bit of the result of that. But I also think, Patrick, you and I talked about this on HQ throughout the week or throughout the, the 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 weekend, the last two days of the tournament, he's kind of, it feels like he's bumping up against his ceiling of like what he, like what he can achieve on the PGA Tour. I'm not saying he can't win on the PGA Tour. He has won on the PGA Tour, but, uh, or he's won, has he corn won? Fair, he, corn Ferry Tour. He's got six Corn Ferry Tour wins. Okay. I thought he won uh, like, like Puerto Rico or something like that, but. I'm not saying he can't win on the PGA Tour, but he's really bumping up against like this is kind of the 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 top of what he can be, and I think you saw it just kind of kind of give out a little bit uh, over over that final nine. So I I think he's actually getting I don't know how you feel, Greg. I think he's getting a ton out of his game. I just think he's he's a little bit limited compared to the Nikolai Hoygards of the world. I understand where you're coming from. I look at it a different way. But it has the kind of a very similar end result. Um, this is something that Rick and I have talked about on seemingly every DFS episode since the fall. It, this guy is so consistent and steady yeah. and good in really all areas. I mean, I, I have uh, some numbers here, but it, it, he has he, he gains strokes every week and everything. It's, it's really impressive. But the results up until this week, just haven't matched. I mean, I haven't heard an interview with him. I haven't seen him in anywhere near contention on Sunday. Maybe a backdoor. You see, he's like the kind of guy you see on 18, make a putt to get within three of the lead while they have 12 holes to go. And it's Xander. You know, it, but Xander we, light. <laughs> we see yeah. a lot more Xander. We don't see any Steven Yeager. Right. And so I, my big question was, is this a problem? Like, it's not like there's one area that all of a sudden, like, he can't putt and he starts, figures out how to putt, and now he contends every week. There's not really that easy lever to pull, but apparently he did find a lever with the driver. Yeah. Um, and it, it got him into contention this week, which I thought was really nice to see. Yeah. He, he was very vocal this week about how he's transformed from a very short and inaccurate driver to a long and somewhat more accurate driver. He got away with a few drives early where I feel like this always happens at Torrey Pines where it's better to hit the ball in the fairway bunker than the rough. And Jaeger tested that limit a lot early on. I, I think he found like three fairway bunkers in the first seven holes and he cashed two bird, like a couple birdies too. Um, but I look at his performance outside of kind of the waywardness off the tee, which I think hurt him down the stretch. And we talked about the putting performance from Xander and Tony, but Jaeger, I haven't looked at the numbers. He, he must feel like he left a lot on the greens. Yeah, uh, he, the was, he was, he lost, uh, he lost two strokes on in the third round and two strokes in the, in the final round. Yeah. And he and, had, and he, the final round, he had a, he three putted 12 from 60 feet. So not, not uh not indefensible there and then on uh on 14 well 14 is where he hit the wayward drive and and couldn't get couldn't get up and down from just off the green and then 17 he hits it ob so uh yeah it just it wasn't it wasn't a great putting performance and i think I, I, you know the driving thing is is super interesting at that age because i feel like with everything else you kind of are what you are right like your accuracy off uh, with irons your your chipping your short game it's not gonna get it just is what it is, but you can gain some distance by do like doing things that other people aren't doing in terms of speed training and stuff like that. You have to be careful with it. But I, I applaud him for going after that because I think it's, it's comfortable to just kind of stay where you're at and, uh, and he's trying to go out and get it. And I, I think that's a, that's a cool thing. Yeah. And he, he's got, uh, 
I don't know if you guys noticed his sponsor on his chest, the co-op. I'm sure people are wondering, like, what the hell is that? It's a Frosé shop here in Charleston. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so he must have ties to the owner somehow because Keith Mitchell is also sponsored by them. I'm guessing maybe he went to the Baylor school. It was Harris English, Keith Mitchell, Steven Yeager, and the owner of the co-op on the golf team. Something like that. So uh, I know they mentioned on the broadcast, Yeager and Mitchell went to the same high school. Harris English went there too? Mm-hmm. Wow. All on the same golf team. Hey, how did uh, somebody was saying this? It might have been it might have been Trevor Immelman on the broadcast. How did Mitchell? <laughs> how how was he getting into Pebble because of if if, if Jaeger made a birdie on eighteen? I have no no idea. I'm guessing maybe Jaeger got through. He was already in through the FedEx Cup next ten, I think. And maybe he got bumped up to the A on swing five. Well, he be... he is in the swing five. Okay, he's he's he moved up thirteen spots and he's fifth in the swing five right now. He's My not, get, he's not in the in the. Uh... Oh well, uh, he's eleventh in the in the next ten. Okay, so my guess is for Pebble Beach. The field, it's the only signature event where the field is set at 80 players because of the Pro-Am. And so what they're doing is they're using those who finished, uh, uh, I guess, 61 and over in the FedEx Cup from last year to fill it. And so oh. Jaeger was one of those spots. And since he qualified through the swing five, one more person was needed, and it's Keith Mitchell, if that makes sense. That does make sense. So it's okay. so the next 10 is you've got your top 10, then Jaeger, Norin, Dietrich, Hubbard, EVR, Brandon Wu, Davis Riley, SH Kim, and then Keith Mitchell. So that that might be it. Yeah. Nance Nance was loving that storyline down the stretch. Yeah, I just but I didn't, I, and maybe he said it. I just missed like the explanation. I kept looking for Keith Mitchell. Like, did he or where did he finish this week? He missed, he missed the cut. cut. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was I was lost. I was confused. I was I was very happy that uh Nance called the A on next 10 and swing five. He called it a Rubik's cube. <laughs> he did. It is. Yeah. I was like, thank you, Jim. Despite despite some of those short misses, Jaeger still kind of had a chance there on 18 to potentially yeah. force a five-way playoff, which would have been sick. So uh sick. but it but instead Nikolai Hogard after kind of just seemed like he was just there most of the day, to tell you the truth. It felt like it was Pavan and Jaeger going back and forth with the flash of Tony Finau missing a putt. But you blink, and Hogard is one back on the 18th tee. And Greg, I mean, he stripes it. I thought he was due for his, his John Rahm moment, honestly, on the 72nd hole at Torrey Pines. You know, um, there were a lot of emotional changes today in who's going to win this tournament, what is going to happen. Um, Pavan elevated himself. Jaeger had, I mean, Jaeger led the field in strokes gained approach. And on, on 17, the shot Jaeger hit, I forgot that he had hit it out of bounds because it was like 20 minutes prior. <laughs> and all I was like, oh, he's got this for Bert. And then it's for Bogey. I'm like, wait, oh, yeah. That's why. So, you know, my point is you don't know like where everybody's going to go. And Hoygaard, every time he makes a birdie, he's making a bogey right after or vice versa. And so he's kind of just puttering around. Like there was never a point in his round where he was outside of one over or one under until 18. And then with Pavan doing what he's doing uh, on 18, Hoygaard's going to steal it. He's going to be the guy to jump out of this uh, this tie, and there's going to be a two shot swing, and the guy nobody was paying attention to is going to win. So, uh, look, but ultimately on um, Nikolai Hoygaard, I think there's, I think this was not his best stuff um, yesterday or today. I think he's he was inaccurate. He seemed to miss hit a number of shots. Um, some one-handed finishes, shots that are right on line that come up 50 feet short that are clear miss hits. And, um, and some errant tee shots too. 
left and right, but he still has a chance to win the golf tournament. And that's where what you were saying, Kyle, the difference between Jaeger and Hoygaard. Hoygaard feels like he could be a he could become a real star. Yeah, I, I leave saying, okay, this guy is. He was he was pre, prob, pretty bad this weekend. And he would probably say that too, and almost won. So he's really good. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think the mistake Patrick was probably on. Sorry, I was just pulling up his transcript to see if he did say he was bad this weekend. Um, <laughs> the mistake's on 13, right? You can't make six there. I, I know he had a bad tee shot, but to compound it by hitting it up the left into the rough again and, and you make six, that's just, that's kind of a mess. And for, you know, for somebody like him who's so long off the tee, you take advantage of the par fives and he, that was, that was to me where it kind of, I mean, he, he, he was still in it, but that, that is probably the one that he'll look back on and be like, yeah, I wish I had that one back. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, he missed a four footer, you know, that kills you, but like, I'm with you, Greg. I think he's a, I think he's a star. He's 22. Yeah. And you don't, you don't win the DP world tour championship with that field if you're not really freaking good at golf. And <laughs> yeah, like you said, Greg, it felt like yesterday's round, he was all over the place and it's like, okay, one over. And I, I was looking through his scorecard when I felt personally, it was just like Pavan and Jaeger going back and forth. Like, I'm like, what is Hogart even like doing right now? What's he at? And he's one under. And I'm like, are you serious? This guy's yeah. under par at this moment <laughs> playing the way he is. Right. Uh, um, it's It was really impressive. And he's really young. And he's like the prototypical golfer, long, great iron player, and can make a lot of putts. Wins. Uh, wins. Yes, that too. He's, and, uh, he's 22 and he, he like wins. In the mix in South Africa, like with JT and Homa at the Ned Bank DP World Tour Championship, wins that. And then he played really well in Dubai, too. Um, both those events. Uh, I got a quote here for you, Greg. Uh, <clears throat> last two days, a bit scrappy. I had to dig deep. I had to grind. It's part of it. Obviously, love the grind when you're out there and you can feel the nerves and you miss a couple of things and you try to work on stuff. But I compete with some poor tee to green overall poor golf the last two days. There so he's self aware too. Go. Yeah. Right. Well, you I mean you know the ball isn't going where he's looking. It's not like sometimes on these difficult golf courses you hit good shots that end up in bad spots. You say, "Geez, you know what could I have done." That wasn't what happened with Hoygaard. I mean, these are some, he is hitting some errant shots. I, I'll, I'll keep going on this, Patrick. I think you'll like this. I've got a bigger picture here. We're on the right path. We're doing some good things. There's a lot of things we can do better. That's a good thing. We're going to regroup. We've got a few more days now preparing for Pebble next week. I'm excited for the future. I'm sure I'm going to get over the, get it over the line at some point. It's about being patient and just stay calm. Obviously, you've got to enjoy this as well. You've got to take your losses with a smile sometimes because it makes you stronger. I'll definitely do my best to get a couple shots better. Wow. Great perspective. Well, I'm all in on this guy. Yeah, he's, you know, he he didn't play a practice round on the South course. Fighting play, jet lag too. Yeah. He played nine holes on, on, on the North. I put a question out on Twitter, Patrick of better career between him and Ludwig. And people were like, you're, you're an idiot. Have you ever seen Ludwig swing a club? <laughs> this is my first time actually. Never. <laughs> I, I'm I'm love I I mean Rasmus is very obviously very good too but I I'm I'm in on Nikolai. I think that's a pretty fair question. It, he's what two years behind him too. Two years younger, yeah. That's the thing people don't realize that he's younger. Pedigree, baby. Yeah, he's just an older professional. Right. It's like Sung Jay. Sung Jay's been on tour since like the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's twenty six. Yeah. And His first what do, PGA Tour uh, win came at eleven. <laughs> <laughs> what does no laying up call? They call him uh, Young Tom Kim, <laughs> or or Old Tom Kim, something like that. Oh, young Tom. And old Tom. <laughs> but you know, we were talking about this too with Brian Harmon, and you feel like Brian Harmon, the Open Championship was this crowning, you know, walk off into the sunset kind of moment, but. 
he's got like 15 years left of playing PGA tour golf yeah. until, until he's 50. Yeah. You know, like 15 years. Think about what Nikolai Hoygaard has in front of him. It's, it's just a, 15 years is like, is like Luka Doncic's in, entire career. <laughs> yeah. Brian Harmon has that left. Right. Right. Assuming he keeps his card and everything, but that's where, like, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a 20, like a 28 year career on the PGA tour. It's like a 30 year career in professional golf. If, if uh, Nikolai Hoygaard doesn't play PGA tour champions. Yeah. Quits at 50, 30 year career. It's wild. Jesus. Um, but the 22 year old Dane, did not cross the finish line. Instead, what are we calling Matthew Pavan, the Hogard killer? Because he clips Rasmus in the DP oh, World yeah. Tour Championship four birdies in a row in Dubai to finish inside the top 10 and get his PGA Tour card instead of Rasmus. And now he takes down Nikolai in his third start on the PGA Tour, the 31 year old rookie, the first Frenchman since World War II. I mean, Martin Trainer is probably he's going to be rolling in his sleep tonight, knowing that. But I guess uh, he didn't play under the French flag when he won, uh, and it was a really kind of nervy start. He, his first birdie putt from 25 feet on one, he just blasted it straight past three putt, and then kind of steadied the ship and played some really good golf in the middle, middle portion of his round. Hit a really really clutch 23 ish footer for par on 16. And then it just hit the fan. It felt like the last two holes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there's there's got to be some French general who defeated Denmark. That we, God, I was thinking the same thing that we could name that we could call Matthew. Pavon. I he's one's like Napoleon. I, yeah, yeah. I I didn't know if we should go there or not. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I I said this on HQ just now, Greg. I I I thought. I was, I mean, physically, obviously, he's he's a professional golfer. He's very good at golf. But mentally, to hit the shot he hit on 16, terrible. To hit the putt he hit on 17, awful. To hit the two shots he hit on 18, just atrocious. <laughs> and then to get up and down from 155, mentally, that is, that's exceptional. Like, that's really, really impressive. And that, that was the part that stood out to me. You know, in, in my notes, it was the same thing. Like, how many times in this round... Did you rule out Matthew Pavone? Yeah. You know, it's like at one. Okay, he's done. Uh, then it, happen it, it happens again at he makes a couple of birdies. And then it happens again at 14 when he hits it over the green. Oh, I think it's gone. That was and hits it to an inch. That was oh, my gosh. Brutal shot. Right. I mean, that was actually a pretty good shot. The one at 16 was both of those were pretty bad. And then he hoops it 17. Yeah, uh, again. So it, it's one, 14, 16, 16, 17, 18, multiple times. Like the, throughout this whole round, it was okay, he's still here, but he's not going to win. Uh, up, he's done. He's done. Here comes the fold. And it never happened. Yeah. And you're right, KP. That's that is mental fortitude. And if the shot he hit at 18 from the rough is, if that's Tiger Woods, it's an all timer. It's yeah. an epic up and down. So ballsy. <laughs> well, because Greg taught me through how that can go wrong, like depending on the why and, and what you're trying to do there. Well, it can come out completely dead and go in the water, it can come out really hot and go barreling over the green. It can the hot the grass can grab the hosel and it can go a mile left. You could overcompensate for that, and I mean, you that's the kind of grass where it almost looks like you could roll it. You know, you could hit it three feet in, in that kind of a lie, and he it comes out perfectly and stops on the and stops like it was coming out of the fairway. Yeah. So I mean the speed and strength that's required to get through that rough and get the contact that you need and predict the distance, right? 
really, really hard to do. Really skillful. I mean, that is probably the longest rough we'll see in a non-major all year on the PGA Tour. I don't think they cut it the entire week. It was, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. balls were just diving into it. Uh, Matthew Pavon, by the way, aspirational pace of play. I mean, yeah, he moves the bunker shot he hit or the the fairway bunker shot he hit on 18. I was like, dude, you you can take like there's nobody behind you. And imagine what he's feeling playing that fast in a six hour round. Oh, (laughs) they went off at 210. They went off at 210 and finished at 740. Yeah, it's we were texting about this this morning. It's. What are we doing? What are we doing? I, I don't know if you guys caught it, what he uh, told Amanda Renner. Uh, he keeps notes in his notebook throughout the round. Stay in the present, one shot at a time. Don't forget to breathe and eat. <laughs> <But> the last <laughs> one. I saw that. <laughs> he was on uh, off the 18th tee box. Yeah. I, <laughs> I noticed that because I was like, I would not be eating right now. I just hit four of the worst shots of my career. A lot of, a lot of saliva chat too with, uh, I, I do not understand what that quote. And that's why he doesn't read the quote. (laughs) Yeah. It changes it. It's a great win for him, but I've never seen a tattoo right here on someone. That is a first. Well, at least that's like a, that's words, you know, it's like a paragraph. Oh, instead of like a butterfly. It's like one of KP's transcript t- uh, tweets. <laughs> yeah, it is. I like All right. It. Matthew Pavon gets it done. 13 under. He's in the field next week at Pebble Beach. Masters invite. PGA Championship. Third start on the PGA Tour. Took him a buck 87 on the European Tour. He now has more PGA Tour victories than Tommy Fleetwood. Thanks. Drive by. Uh, he's got as many as Tyrrell and I don't know who else only has one. Uh, he has more than Cameron Young. Mm. <laughs> one week can change your life. All right. That is it. We got to get to best bets, which was a lot of red. I think we got to get to one and done, which spoiler. None of us had Matthew Pavon. Um, Josh, do I? Yeah, I think I got to take another break. So we're going to take a break. We're going to do that right now. On the next NFL Monday QB, with the regular season in the rear view, it's time to turn the page to Super Wild Card Weekend. A playoff slate jam packed with playoff drama. See who has what it takes to make it to the divisional round on CBS Sports Network. Ooh, and we are back. Kyle, you missed this part. I'm, I'm going to test you real quick. Noblio threw out this stat on the broadcast. Tony Fee now had 10 putts this week from four to eight feet. How many do you think he made? Wait, uh, who, who had who had 10 putts? Tony Fee now had 10 putts from four to eight feet this week. Four to eight feet. He only had 10? I'm assuming. It's either 10 probably or on three, Probably on three courses. Yeah. Three rounds. Four to eight feet, ten, ten putts. Uh, I'd say he made he made f- four of them. He made one. Oh, <laughs> I've got a, I've got a putting stat for you. Okay, Nikolai Hoygaard, zero for twenty one from over twenty feet, Ooh. which is not you know like it's not good, but it's not atrocious. But usually that doesn't lead to a second place finish. Right. Matthew Pavon, seven for 26 from over 20 feet. Holy cow. He hooped seven putts from over 20 feet this week. That's crazy, right? I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that even counts the North course. I, I don't know if that was, I'd have to look. I don't know. I, I would doubt that. Because mm-hmm. they don't have shot link out there. Right. Yeah. So they won't have the distances. Yeah, he made seven. Nate Lashley made was five for twenty two. Nobody else made more than three. So he'd more than doubled the third guy on that list. Damn. Twenty to twenty five feet. 
uh, it's just over 20. So I think so oh, over I think, 20. I think, I think there was like a 30 foot. I mean, I think there was a lot of of different ones in there. And then there was about, about 20 guys or 15 guys in the field that didn't make any. And, and Nikolai Hoygaard and Finau were both in there. Dude, I was honestly low key rooting for uh, Lashley there at the end just so we could get him back at Pebble Beach. I know uh, he has a love hate relationship with that 16th green there, I think. Yeah, didn't he? Didn't he like <laughs> pound the. When, when was that last year? Two years ago? That might have been Daniel Berger year. So three years ago, maybe? What did he, what did he do? Uh, he, he like took his putter and it was like slamming it like he was trying to level the ground uh i remember that that was yeah. the year that burger fell over in the bunker like backwards yeah, yeah. remember that good memory the the jt before jt did it at wyndham <laughs> yeah all right josh pull up this uh this betting board of ours let's see how we did oh oh greg i'll let you I'll, I'll let you walk through Rick's matchup, Luke List plus 100 over Nikolai Hogard did not win. No, but yeah, you <laughs> lost in style, right? Luke List made the cut. I like Luke List this week too. Um, yeah, didn't work out so well. It did not. That's it's embarrassing because Hogard was such a factor all week. Yeah, and then we had KP a push, Sepp Straka over. Eric Cole, even money in a bit of a pillow fight. Yeah, they both missed the cut by a lot. Uh, so not not a great one. Lucky. I, point. I lost my wine bet with Mark Sung JM. I think a surprising omission from the final two days. Minus 130 over Ludwig did not hit. Mark loses Justin Rose, even money over Shane Lowry. So we really did nice on those. A little green in the finishing positions. Rick cashes the Tony Finau top 10 at plus 260. That was nice. Uh, I yeah. cashed the Michael Kim top 40 at plus 155, even though I tried to curse him. It felt like on HQ this week. Uh, and then he, he, was, a, he was in the mix, Patrick. He ends up in tied 37th. He was in the mix, and then I went on HQ and said he was going to win the golf tournament, and he lost. He, he lost his golf swing. Yeah, uh, he was a shot inside the top forty. <laughs> wow, it was ugly. Um, and then KP, you had Keegan Bradley top twenty, kind of a quiet week for Keegan. Yeah, I thought I thought the disappointments of the week were probably. I don't know if Keegan was in it. I, th I think Morikawa and Sung Jay were were yeah. the big disappointments this week. Just not even. Especially Morikawa played well on Wednesday and then just was awful on, on he Thursday. Five under and shot 75 on Thursday. Yeah, it was it was bad. So I, I thought Keegan not great, but not as disappointing as, as Colin Morikawa and Sungja. Yep. Mark had Ben Griffin top 40 plus 120. Did not hit outright a whole lot of Colin, a little Sungja, a whole lot of Keegan. And some Sahith and Minwu didn't sniff it at all. Minwu played well, didn't he? Didn't he finish top? I thought he was in there. He made the cut after an eagle, and then he finished T forty three. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not not a not our finest. I don't think any of those players finished in. I felt so 30. confident too. I was like, <laughs> I was just. It's like, oh, Homa, Sung Jay, I've, I've, I nailed this, and then just nothing. Yeah, that's when, uh, that's when a lot of red typically happens. Yeah. Uh, and the red was not exclusive to the betting board. The best bets, Josh, not great. No, Sam I Ryder, top forty from Rick, does not hit. Kyle, the the par, the top twenty parlay. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sung J Colin both missed the cut. Max Soma has a nice tournament. Uh does not hit either. Max back door to top 15. Yeah. We talked about him earlier. T13. Yeah, that's wild. Uh God, I felt so confident about Sung J, even more so than Morikawa. And he just I, I honestly like if he makes the cut, I think he finishes top 20. Yeah. Uh my parlay fee now, Jason Day, Keegan Bradley to make the cut. Does not hit Jason Day. I think uh, he might have seen some of my tweets. 
critiquing his style and uh, fell on the sword there. Mark, for a playoff, Ooh. it looked like it had a really good chance yeah. there. Really good chance. Wow. Three, three to one. He was he was uh, lamenting how if there was a playoff, he was going to miss his connection uh, in Denver. So looks like he's going to get home on time at least. That's a gutsy best bet. It's Mark. He, he's just searching for answers right now. You know what I like? You know what I like <laughs> about it? Try you to... are you can't be out of that bet until the very end. Yeah, I, that is true. Like that someday might... you're gonna have some fun with it. Mark's between uh, between swing patterns. <laughs> yeah, he, he has way too many training aids going on right now. He's that guy on the range with the noodle with yeah. the wrist guard the noodle, for sure. It's like Rory trying to figure out the Masters prep. <laughs> yeah. Which fired. It's gonna it's a busy one. Um change it every year. It is a busy one. All right, let's get to the one of duns, Josh. Let's pull that up. I don't know who we had. Mark. Oh, this is st- <laughs> this was <laughs> pretty much like the betting board. Not great. Uh Mark Keegan Bradley still in the basement at 346,000 thanks to him missing the pick at the century. I also had Keegan Bradley, didn't do great. Rick also had Keegan Bradley, didn't do great. I believe he made two. Josh said twenty eight thousand earnings are in the rundown. Yeah, he made he made twenty eight thousand. Greg, you had Sahith Thigala. He cashed you eighteen grand this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a bad week. It just is for one and done. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine many people had a uh, a ton of uh, the he final was l- group. He was lucky to make the cut. Yeah. Tigala was lucky to make the cut. I'm glad he did. I'll take the 18 large and move on. Producer Josh had Sung Jay, as did our leader, the only man with seven digits, Kyle Porter, at over a million dollars. Like you said, KP, disappointing week from Sungja. Yeah, well, somebody in the uh, we have about a thousand people in our pool. Somebody had a uh, Hoyard, damn, which is impressive. Bunch of Fino, which was a, is obviously a good pick at Corey. Bunch of Xander, Xander. Uh, we don't. You guys hopefully already talked about him. I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> uh, bunch of Keegan, a lot of Keegan. Holy cow! Yeah, and a bunch of Jason Day. So, yeah, Sung Jay, ah, it's a bummer. He he doesn't miss a ton of cuts. So, you know, it's not a it's not a massive loss for two reasons. One, uh, nobody else did anything out of our crew, and two, it's not a ma- it's not a huge purse. But you can flip that around and say, well, the signature events, there's no you can't miss the cut. So, you know, I think any any money you can win, even in smaller purses, is gonna be is gonna be beneficial. Yeah, I think uh, oh, you, you want me to read this promo, Josh? Go vote for First Cut Podcast for the best sports podcast in the world. Uh, he does not. I think uh, I'm not sure if these are updated on the right, but you're obviously not a golfer. Still leads the way. Shade under four million. OK, Boomer. BA314. Mike M and Joe Keenan. You know are, who you are. Yeah, well done. Just know the three of us were coming for you with that SIG money next week, 3.6 million Sims. on the line. That's where champions are made. We got to make our move uh, on the fans. We can't be having them just take us to the cleaners like this. Oh, uh, well, Paul, it was a tough week for you. In I might be Paul in that, in his pull that back up, producer Josh. Did y'all see this video of, of this guy and his uh, his little avatar there from the Bills game last week? He <laughs> cried. That might, that might actually be Paul. <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> I mean, that guy, I, my kids haven't cried like that in a while. That guy <laughs> took, it, took it hard. Football. All right. Um, I think that is all we got. We'll, we'll touch on some of the storylines in Tuesday's episode. Uh, big week. We got DFS on Monday, preview Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, back to the normal schedule 
everyone enjoy your Sunday off. Maybe sleep in a little bit. Who y'all got tomorrow? I, I'm I, I gotta root. You gotta root for the Lions. I feel like right. Yeah. Hell yeah. I was rooting. Lions. I was going Lions Bills. Um, I didn't cry about it after, but I really wanted to see Lions Bills. So now I guess Lions uh, Ravens. Yeah, I'm I'm good on the Chiefs. Yeah, Taylor me Swift too. is ruining the. No, that's not. <laughs> that's not on me. That's not my take. I'm just good on the Chiefs. I can't believe you said that, Kyle. No, <laughs> Do not do not clip <laughs> any of this. The Swifties are coming after you. We do need, honestly, I saw Ben on tweet that someone on the PGA Tour needs to start dating someone famous. Which, I, yeah, it, it'd have to be Hovlander. I guess Tom Kim. Ludwig would be a good one, too. Imagine if Tom Kim was dating an A-lister. How funny that would be. <laughs> it, would the, be it would be awesome. The paparazzi's following him. In New York City, it would be so good. <laughs> he's so just, yeah, yeah. He's so innocent, and oh, it would be incredible. Tom Kim and Dua Lipa will make it happen. All right, I think that's all we got for you guys tonight. Great show! Thank you, producer Josh, for the travel and getting the ones and twos yep. squared away. Uh, thank you to Kyle Porter. You can find him at Kyle Porter CBS. That is Greg Ducharme. You can find him at The Real GFD. I'm Patrick McDonald. This was the First Cut Podcast. Thanks for listening.